Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Greenside Up. Um, yesterday, some of you may have noticed I did a very, very quick live stream and then it was quickly deleted. I know one or two people commented on it. My apologies for that. Um, it was meant to be just a quick test to see if the functionality would work for me. And I was hoping to delete it before anyone saw it, but obviously not, you guys are too quick. So my apologies for deleting your comments, which I treasure. Anyway, moving on, um, yeah, um, my phone broke, I've bought a new phone and it's got a better functionality to be able to do that. So I'm now looking into um, how I can do that moving forward for the channel. So that will be something that will be happening probably into the later part of this year um, when we can do some little live streams, maybe from the plot. I've got a couple of other little tests to do and a little bit of reading uh to do to find out about it so bear with me we'll get there the same as we do with everything but today anyway today's video is all about alliums and um looking after the onions getting them into storage but we're going to start first with some garlic so i've got some garlic here that it's all been nicely dried off and not the best garlic in the world but it'll do um so it's all been dried off now and all I've done with it is I, I don't peel I know some people like to peel these leaves off and to reveal the white underneath um, I never have and I'm the same with onions as well I don't do that if they're loose I'm going to flake off I'll take them off but otherwise I don't peel them um, so this is what we've got and all I've done is just trimmed the roots down on that and I'm going to attempt to plait it now that's something I've never done before um, chiefly because I don't normally grow this much garlic um, because it, it hasn't or always done well for me but this year it has done well and I've got some rather nice bulbs and I think they deserve looking after properly so my first attempt at plaiting it is going to be on there on this channel now so we'll crack on with that <laughs> Now, as I've never plaited garlic before, uh, I did what most people do. I went onto YouTube to have a look and I found Hannah at um, Allotments for Life. And she's done a great little short video of how to do it. I mean, really, I should just post her video because it's brilliant. Uh, post a link to her video, but I'm going to have a crack myself and see how I get on. But she started with two or three bulbs like this, which she was crossing and I hope Hannah I'm getting this right <laughs> and then she tied it and she said it's not cheating so if it's not cheating I'm going to have a go and we'll see how we get on with this <laughs> I've probably already done it wrong but I care not right oh, that's marvellous It only happened when you'd film him, wouldn't it? So there we go. Well, this is going well, isn't it? So, you put the next one in and with the stalk down the middle, you fold one over into the middle and you get your next one in with the stalk down the middle and fold the next one in actually this is pretty easy or easier than I thought it would be and you keep going like that oh yeah this seems to be working well oh god I'm an expert now look at that we'll see if we, as we get see how we go, go as we get on so obviously these are getting thicker now. So put the next one in, stem down the middle, and fold the outside over into the middle. But every time you lay a new garlic down, your stem goes down the middle and then you fold the side over it to plait it. Now, normally I don't grow so much garlic because 
the stuff that you get in the in the grocers is normally so good I don't need, normally need to bother so much but I grew some more this year than I normally would hence why I'm plotting it now so we'll see what it's like when it's finished I'm sure this could be much much better This is actually quite therapeutic to do this. I'm not sure how long I should make it. I think we'll call it there. Now you just need to do a few extra plats to finish, as Hannah said, with a flourish. This is actually much easier than I thought it would be. Because I'm, I'm a fairly ham-fisted type of a guy and I thought I'd be tugging and ripping away at this and making quite a mess of it. There we go, look at that. Now, just not sure how to finish this off. I think Hannah tied it. So I think we'll go with there. See if we can find any of my string. <laughs> there we go. I'm pretty pleased with that to be honest. I wasn't sure that I could do that. Now here's the true test. Look at that. That's great. <laughs> Very pleased with that. Thanks Hannah for the uh, for the short video. Shows me how to do that. There we go. That looks great. <laughs> Now it's always a bit of an issue buying jute twine. You'll see it advertised as three millimeters, four millimeters thick, and you'll get it, and it's it's almost thinner than your hair. It's ridiculously rubbish, and that type of stuff I'll only use for actually tying plants into canes or other structures. But this is something I bought um, early part of the summer. It's Ancio jute twine, and. It, this is a really, really good thickness. It says it's three mil, and by golly, it is three mil. And it wasn't that cheap. I mean, when I bought it, it was seven pound 20, I think. I bought it off Amazon, and I will put the link below. But I've just looked now on Amazon, it's now nine pound something. So it might be worthwhile waiting, put it on your watch list if you're interested in buying it ready for next season. But this is the, the roll that uh, I'm using for tying up my onions. And I think if I was going to do it, I could actually grow tomatoes up this. So you get a nice big roll, 1,000 feet, 300 metres. But uh, I'm not advertising the product. I just know that it's difficult to get hold of a decent twine. You're playing, um, you're playing a game to trying to get it. But I'm using this to string up my onions. Okay, look at that. Look, look, look at that. And I'm just going to trim these up. And all I do is just take off these roots. I don't bother taking off these leaves or the dirt. Grab hold of it, the stem, by the onion, and just a few inches past, trim it off. And that's literally all I'm doing with these onions before I string them up. So any sort of loose stuff I'll just peel away, get rid of.
it's not an exact science. Anyway, we'll get on with the stringing now. I'll reset the camera up and show you. So I've got a nice tray of prepared onions down here at my feet. And I'm going to take two, open out the loop. And I'm going to tie these in a rough half granny knot. And just wrap them around. That's your bottom one. And they'll hold. And your next one, put it through the loop. There we go, you can see it's gone through the loop, fold the stalk under, and then just push it down onto the top. The weight of the onion is then holding that in place. Now the thing with doing these onions is to not be greedy. We've all seen, we've all seen the, the typical Frenchman with the strings of onions around his neck and it looks like they're you know, 15 foot long. That's all right if they're small onions, but if they're not, if they're big ones like these beasts, the weight will just be too heavy and you've got every chance of the string breaking or the onions falling off. Or them being too heavy for the hook even and, and pulling the hook out, which I've also had before. I've had all these problems before. And I realise now that the best way is just to keep the strings short. And you want to keep them somewhere cool and dark. And preferably frost free. This will keep your onions in good nick all winter. And what I have done in the past is if we get a really, really cold spell, like we did in the early part of spring this year. I'll take these strings off, where they're hanging up in the shed at home. I'll take them off and put them on the floor in some big trays. And then cover them with a fleece or a blanket, just to keep the frost off them. Certainly over a prolonged period of frost cold weather as well but stored like this they, they should see you into next year this will already be quite some weight so I'm only going to put another four on here and say I've learnt from past mistakes about putting too much on them. Yeah, if I used a rope, I could probably get away with it, but this is ample. And it means that moving them around and transporting them is easier. So that's it, stringing onions. That's all you need to do. If they're smaller onions or a medium sized onion, then, you know, you can um, put more on. But there we go, that's the first string. So there we go, there's a few of the different types done. You can see by the size of the onions, the strings that have done smaller. I mean, these are ginormous onions. These are my Bedfordshire champions. These were multi sound smaller, so I've gone a bit bigger with the string. The red onions, a little bit smaller again, <coughs> excuse me. So again, a bigger string. And this one was the multi sound. Um, I think these were a Red Brunswick, there's an American variety that I was trying this year, but they're much smaller, so they've gone in a bigger string. But you don't really want any more than that on a string, uh, because as I say, if they fall, they'll all bruise and they'll rot over winter. So keep them small, just hang them up in your shed. As long as they're kept frost free, cool, dark, and dry, they've got a bit of a airing every now and again when you go in your shed for another string of onions, then you know they'll, they'll be fine and they'll see you through. So there we go, there's onions strung up. <laughs> so I've learned a new skill today in plaiting this garlic and I'm really, really very pleased with myself and how that's turned out. Um, learning new skills is always good. So yeah, I'm really made up of that. But that's it for today. That's today's video over and done with. Hope you enjoy that. Uh, I'll get these home and into storage now. 
and tomorrow we'll string the rest up. There's still, I've still got as much again to, <laughs> to string up, but we'll get them done. So yeah, very pleased with that. So look after yourselves, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. Toronto. <laughs> Whoa.